All right, that's cool then. All right. So if you guys are just joining us, welcome to Real Life Cooking with Chef Lean and special guest today, James Bradbury. He is a chef in his own right, um, <laughs> for sure. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We are uh, making wings today, although James is making drumsticks, but this recipe works either way. You have your oven on, right, at 425? Yeah, that's good enough. All right, awesome. So we're going to start marinating our chicken. So the first thing we're going to do is put our chicken in a bowl. So we're going to do, obviously, a quick marinade today because we have an hour. And I am using these little, like, party wings, but James has drumsticks. But like I said, you can use, you can make this recipe with any piece of chicken with a bone. You can even make it with chicken breast, but I don't really like chicken breast. How do you feel about chicken breast, James? I just like chicken period, to be honest with you. <laughs> all kinds of chicken. I have a lot of wings here. So I'm probably not gonna cook all these at this in this hour. Yeah, I got like six drumsticks. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. I wasn't sure how much to get. Well, you're going to, however much you wanted to eat is how much you should get. Well, six, six, could be, six would be good. Is that like one setting of eating? Like you eat six wings or six drumsticks? Nah, I probably don't eat two. Maybe. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so we're going to season our drumsticks or our chicken with some barbecue seasoning. Um, so I have, oh yeah, if you guys have any questions for me or for James, go ahead and culinary questions, uh, go ahead and drop them in the box or football questions, drop them in the box below and my technological guru, Christopher, <laughs> will relay them to us. So we are going to season with a barbecue seasoning. And if you guys watch Real Life Cooking, you guys know I like these all-in-one seasoning mixes. Because you don't have to buy all the different spices. All the different spices can be expensive. Which one do you have, James? I got the uh, barbecue grill mix rub. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's a good one. It's and, cool. Yep. And so you want to season heavily. Like, put, like, four tablespoons of seasoning on your chicken. This is where your flavor is going to come from. You going to measure yours? No, I didn't measure mine. I measure mine from my heart. You can measure from your heart, too, because I know you're a chef, so... I'm going to just stop when you stop. <laughs> Go ahead. I Where can you get barbecue seasoning? Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. You need Keep more. Going. I don't know. This is All right. That looks good, I think. Oh, what happened to him? You can get barbecue seasoning from the seasoning section in your store. Um, It's not. Oh, yeah. That looks perfect. So now we want to add salt. Um, actually, read right, your look. seasoning mix. Does it have salt in it? Does your seasoning mix have salt in it, James? Because sometimes they do. Yeah, it got sea salt in it. It has some salt? Yeah, sea salt. Okay, so we want to be a little careful about yes, how much more salt we're adding. But we do want to add some salt. Next. We're going to add in our Dijon mustard. Whoa, the sun just got crazy. <laughs> Next, we're going to add in some Dijon mustard. And you're going to add in about a fourth of a cup for your chicken. Yep. I think. Oh, my spoon is too big for my jar. So this, James, is the secret of these wings because you get a lot of flavor and you're getting some moisture into your chicken with your Dijon mustard. <laughs> also, I forgot to have, I'm going to have to climb up here. Someone said some call. That was a handful. Who, me? Yes. I put a fourth of a cup, approximately. Of salt? Yeah, I didn't oh. put a Dijon mustard on the chicken. Not of salt. Yeah, mustard. So mustard's adding seasoning and it's adding, it's adding moisture. And then we're going to also add a fourth a cup of apple cider vinegar. Is that it? Yep. This is going to help keep your wings moist or drumsticks. I noticed that when you grill wings, they tend to get dry sometimes, and that's going to help that. 
Mm -hmm. The brand of mustard matter. The brand of mustard does not matter. Um, I, yeah, no, it doesn't matter at all, really. Just not yellow mustard. Use Dijon mustard. And then finally, if you want to add in some extra virgin olive oil. It may seem like a little weird to add oil to chicken that already has its own grease, but it also helps keep it moist and helps season it. Yeah, I typically put a lot of olive oil on my chicken. Nice. What do you normal? How do you normally cook your chicken? Uh, usually I just do lemon pepper. Lemon, lemon pepper, pepper and oil baking oil. or frying or. No, nah, I usually grill it. Can't see. And I bake it. Oh, you grill it outside? Uh, something like that. All right. I don't really have like a big uh, griller, but I have a. Um, I had an air fryer. I would do it like that, but I don't do like the bread and stuff because I don't want. I don't want to intake all those carbs. Yeah, for sure. It's not even worth it. All right. Oh, sorry. The last thing we're going to do is a squeeze of lemon. So half of a lemon. Squeeze of lemon. Yeah. Question? Um, James, one you. of our uh, Giants fans asked if you're ready for the NFC East receiver. Or, yeah, NFC East receivers. Are you ready for the NFC East receivers? Uh, For sure. I mean, I've been playing football for four years now in the NFL. <laughs> Nothing phases you, right, James? Yeah, I'm ready for whatever. <laughs> um, all right, so now that we have all of our seasonings in this bowl, we're going to use our hands to mix our chicken. I find that using your hands makes it the most spread out all around and the best. All uh right. -huh. And then this is a weird thing that I do, but I normally smell like whatever I'm cooking before it's even cooked just because – when it's seasoned properly, it has a certain smell to it. It mm. kind of, it won't smell like raw meat. It'll smell like, I don't know, it'll smell good. It'll smell like you want to eat it, but you can't. All right, let's. Yeah, mine smells straight right now. It smells good? All right, me too. I'm going to set this aside and wash my hands. Wash your hands too. And we are going to bring over our corn. Actually, let's start heating our grill pan and bring over our corn. So, Walt, oh, do you have a question? Someone's asking to be able to see his actual food. Is there any way you can get the corn on the opposite end so you can actually see it? Oh, so the people are asking for us to be able to see your cutting board where if you can put your phone. I guess I don't want to see your pretty face anymore. They're asking you cutting things and doing things. Oh, Cool. I was trying to make sure I was in the camera, but I don't care if I'm in the camera anyway. <laughs> it's not about you, James. It's about the food. It's about the food, apparently. <laughs> so look at there's James chicken. It's seasoned with apple cider vinegar, Dijon mustard, barbecue seasoning, lemon, and uh, that's it. And salt. We added additional salt. But our salt, our seasoning already had salt in it, so we were careful about how much salt we added to it. How much? What did yours look like? Mine looks like this. Yeah, it's about the same. Yeah, it looks the same. There you are, Facebook. I just want to make sure I ain't messing up. <laughs> All right. So we want to let that sit. In real life, you could let that sit for overnight, and it would add even more flavor, obviously. You don't really ever want to marinate chicken more than overnight because then it just kind of changes the texture a little bit. It gets it gets weird. So 24 hours is the max, I would say. Um, and then we are going to be using our grill pans because I live in New York and I can't go outside. <laughs> and it's, it's kind of the beginning of grilling season. It's May now. And we're going to just go ahead and turn it up on the stove. James, you there? You said put it on the stove, right? Yep, start heating it up. And then you're going to bring your corn over. And I don't know if your corn has uh, husks or not, but you want to remove those. Oh, you got real corn. I have, like, halfway corn here. That's already halfway off. Uh, yeah, I just got ketchup. You said what? I got to catch up. 
Oh, You're cutting board? Cutting oh, there's board. nothing happening on my cutting board right now. I'm just husking some corn. Gotcha. You gotta shut the corn, James. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> the heat level of our grill pan is uh, high heat. I bet. Did you cook a lot when you were growing up, James? I didn't cook at all. Oh, really? So you just started cooking in your adult life? I I, might, I started like two years ago. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. I was going to ask you if you had to shut corn when you were a kid, because that was one of my jobs, and I hated it. <laughs> oh, no. Nah, I just uh, went in the fridge and warmed something up. Oh, lucky you. Who was the best cook in your family? The best cook in my family. I don't want to get anyone in trouble, though, so careful how you answer that. <laughs> Honestly, I was with my mom and my grandma most of the time, and we didn't do much cooking, so... Um, oh, really? So who cooked? Who? What did you eat? I ate at the restaurants, or... Oh, okay. Food. okay. My mom, my mom oh. cooked a little bit, though. She, um... To me, her best dish was the spaghetti. Spaghetti. Is there anything special she did, like, for the spaghetti? I'm not even sure. I just ate it. I didn't really ask any <laughs> It's, yeah, like you said, only in the past two years have you become this very nuanced chef into food and things, right? Yeah, something like that. All right, so we have our corn, and we are going to rub it with some olive oil and season it with salt and pepper. Olive oil, salt, and pepper. Yep, because we're going to grill this corn on our pan. Yeah, salt and pepper. I'm making a gigantic mess, but whatever. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's really hard. Can you push it back, maybe? No, pulling it back makes it wider. But you can see. But you can see. But you can see. Be... If you keep pulling back. See? Oh, okay. But I can't. Okay. So, yeah, I just rubbed my corn and some olive oil and some pepper. And our grill pan should be almost hot. Where did I put my pepper? Oh, here's my pepper. You don't need to see. <laughs> Have you ever had um, the elote corn, James? Like with the cheese and the lemon? Um, I'm not sure. I've had Mexican corn before. Is that kind of the same thing? Yeah, that's the same thing. Elote, elote yeah, that's, yeah. That's real good. Yeah, it's super good. So if you wanted to make elote, you could... Um, do the same method, and then you would just rub your corn in some mayonnaise and cheese. It's so healthy for you. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, then a little bit of lemon. That was the proper name for it. That's what they called it at the restaurant I went to. Yeah. Am I doing it right? Yeah, perfect. Oh, good. Uh, what I just, do you just want to make sure the olive oil is all over the corn. I'll put some more in there. Um, because the olive oil is what's going to help get those nice grill marks on the corn when we put it on our grill pan. And it's going to add, the grill marks are not only adding, uh, like, color, obviously, but it's also adding flavor. Oh, uh, so no more. James, they said that's enough pepper. <laughs> it came out loose. Don't listen to the haters, James. I am yeah, I will not lead you astray. <laughs> no, I like pepper. That's why I put so much on there. Okay. What's your favorite spice? I like garlic. Oh, yeah. garlic. Like fresh garlic or garlic powder, a combination of the both? Uh, any type of garlic, really. Any type of garlic. Well, in that case, if you want to throw some garlic powder on here, too, you definitely can. No, I'm going to just stay with this. Do it. <laughs> okay. All right. So if our my pan seems hot. If your pan is hot, we're going to start grilling our corn. We're literally just putting it in the pan, and it should make a sizzling noise. And we're going to leave it. We're not going to touch it for a minute, at least. Couldn't you put oil on top of the pan? And see if it was... So I didn't put olive oil in my, or oil in my pan because we're using a grill pan. And a grill pan or a cast iron pan should be nonstick. Um, if it is properly seasoned, so you don't ever really have to use oil in it. Um, and these are brand new, so I definitely know I don't need to use olive oil in it or oil in it. Um, and actually, when you use oil in a grill pan, it kind of ruins. Like if you use too much, it kind of gets in the cracks and it. 
and then it's just a lot harder to clean. It's kind of a mess. But if you can, avoid using oil in your pan, your grill pan. And our house, my house is going to start to get real smoky as this is grilling. All right, so when you got done with your corn, you just dropped it on the skillet? Yep, just put it right on the skillet. All right, I don't know about dropping. You might want to pick places. <laughs> Yeah, so sorry, bro. I got, I got my phone turned down, so I can't really see what you're doing over there. Yeah, that's what you're doing. So, so far, if you guys are just joining us, we have marinated our chicken in this barbecue seasoning, Dijon mustard, lemon, and apple cider vinegar goodness. And it is... Uh, uh, marinating and we've seasoned our corn and we are placing it we place it on our grill pan to get the nice charred grilled marks for our corn salad question chris um my cast iron turns rusty any ideas to prevent that for sure so cast iron people i love and hate cast iron because i love it because it cooks so well you get such an even crust you get such great color but i hate it because it's such a hassle to take care of um when you get rust on it, it means that you are leaving water on your cast iron for far too long. So, yeah, when you get when you get water, or when your cast iron is rusty, it means you're leaving water on it. In all actuality, you shouldn't even really have to use so much water when you're cook, uh, cleaning your cast iron. It's actually better to use a combination of um, of salt. If you can just use salt to scrub off all the hey. bits and pieces. Question. Hey, James, the fans just voted. They would rather see you or the food, not the top of the wall. <laughs> They'll be all right. <laughs> James thing, is over here. here to see you, James. James is over here Man. trying to make a good meal. James, he, doesn't you care about, he doesn't care about who's watching. He's like, Look, I'm trying to make James, you can place it against that wall by your stove. Look, well, when I turn my phone food. down and they see my food, I can't see what she's doing. And then when I put it up towards my face, oh, but I can't really... Bad. I can't really work. That's why you got to listen just, to her. Just, just let the man work. Let the man be comfortable in what he wants to do. Yeah, because I'm putting pressure on me right now. <laughs> it, it's no pressure. No pressure. It's just Sunday night. We're just hanging out, like grilling some corn inside. <laughs> I just, I just want my food to come out right. That's all. You watching The Last Dance tonight, you got some bad food. If you're... Now, that's the thing, though. I'm trying to make sure my food come out good. Yeah, for sure. No, that is the most important. I really appreciate that, James, because people like to cook and not pay attention, and that, and then wonder why their food doesn't come out. Like you have to be actively cooking if you're actually cooking. Yeah, of course. You turn the corn. So we're gonna turn the corn when you start getting grill marks on it. So I'm gonna bring mine over. It takes a while for cast iron to heat up, but these are the marks that we're looking for. And my cast iron, my stove, I have like a such a horrible stove if you guys watch this show often you know i really hate it but you want basically all your corn to look like this so you're just going to kind of be rotating it and keeping an eye on it as it's going all right well james do you think you can do two things at one time yeah <laughs> i'm gonna try okay <laughs> so while our corn is cooking we don't have to like oh see your your pan is that is what you want if you see james's uh pan right now that is exactly what you're looking for good job my pan not so much it's not hot enough i don't know i don't know what it is i i was actually supposed to have a grill pan just like james's that is the grill pan i recommend for your house flat square oh, not boy. one with rounded edges it really just ruins i don't know why it's not great not as good but that is the kind of grill pan that you want to have in your house um and James's corn is looking like perfection, and I'm actually quite jealous. Why are you trying to make me look bad on my own show, James? I'm trying to keep up. I ain't think it's going to sound like this. <laughs> Your corn looks You're great. going too fast for him, Kathleen. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, you good. Right. I'm here. We, we good. We're right here. We're on the same stuff. All right. If, if James doesn't put his hands on you on the field, you know, he can't run with you. I so like, I like James's hand, calm energy. I, I need some more of this calm energy in my life. I'm, like, too hyped up. You're just like, let's just chill, cook this corn. Well, just know, if I mess up, I'm not a professional. <laughs> and if you mess up, then it's a different story. That's why I said. Stop showing me up on my own show. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. We have a couple questions while this corn is cooking. Questions? James. 
do you think you're a top five corner in the league? Uh, that's an opinionated question. I don't really get into that. I just go out there and guard the receiver. I ain't going to answer that one. But appreciate the question, though. That corn looks amazing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Maybe you should work on our corn. We're going to eat. I can't. The, I only can make the oven go or the stove go, but so high. I have another question for James. What's up? Um, what, is the, what are you most excited about when you come to New York City? Uh, just meet my meet my new teammates. Um, so new locker room, whole new culture. Just want to get adjusted. Is it like sad to leave a team? Is that a, a question? <laughs> Is it like I feel like it would be so sad to leave people that you played with for so long? You know, I mean, I guess everyone's always moving around in a sense. Yeah. But... Um, in my position, it wasn't really sad because it's part of the business. But like, uh, definitely, like when you're in a locker room and you see friends that you've met. And they get released or traded and stuff. It's pretty yeah, sad. Yeah, I can imagine that being hard. You're you're almost yeah. living like a transient life when you're moving around. But you're gonna be in New York for a few years, <laughs> so yeah. So it's um, cool. Cool question. Uh, for you, Chef. Okay. Any shrimp recipes I can use at home? My girlfriend is a pescatarian, and she eats shrimp so much. Um, shrimp recipes. I mean, shrimp just cooked in butter is great. Butter, lemon, like shrimp scampi, garlic, parsley. Uh, shrimp and grits is great. It's, I like shrimp curry. I don't eat a ton of it because Chris doesn't really like curry so much. But curry is great with shrimp. Um, what else? Even like shrimp ceviche. You actually have to, I prefer to poach my shrimp before and then mix it in the lemon juice and tomato and cilantro. Super, super good. Cinco de Mayo on Tuesday. Great um, choice for Cinco de Mayo. Um, all right. My corn is just making making me look bad so james do you want to wrote yeah you want to rotate your corn so basically almost all around it it's gonna look like those you have those brown char marks all right but i was a little worried i thought i was gonna burn my corn for a second <laughs> no so in this case when you're grilling color is flavor unless you yeah there is a fine line like if you just forget about something on the grill you're definitely gonna end up with something that is burnt but mm. the color do not be afraid of a little bit of color when you're grilling say no more <laughs> hey, chill out. All right. My corn is starting to come along a little bit. Starting to do something. Your corn looks like it's almost done, James. Hey, do you have a tripod? Or are you on your computer? Uh, I have a chair and a can of vegetables that I put my <laughs> technology on. Oh yeah, that's why I, I should have probably put it put it out further. That's why I messed up. That was yeah, that those look perfect. Say no more. So the salad that we're making is um it's kind of like a fresh salad. It's not like your vegetables are gonna be like super hard cooked or anything. And you know you can eat corn raw and especially in, as we get into summer, fresh like raw corn salad is super good. Question. Tuning in. Who are you cooking with and what do you got? Oh, cooking? so if you are just joining us, welcome to Real Life Cooking with James Bradbury. He's over here showing off, showing me up with his grilling of the corn. We're making um we Who is James Bradbury. James Bradbury is a new I think it's funny to say a new New York Giant. It's like double double new. New New York Giant. He just signed with the Giants and he is a cornerback and he loves to cook. And he made better corn than me, so I'm a little upset right now. Oh. <laughs> James, this is actually the perfect angle. I would just like to let you know. Oh, James, right this, is, this is the perfect angle. Right yes. here? Yep, because yeah. we can see enough of the cooking board. We can oh. see enough of the stove. And if you pop back down, you'll see your face. All right, so while I'm corn, I think you can take your corn off the grill, James. All uh, right. And just set it aside to cool off. Yeah. Because your former teammate, Kawan Short, just said, uh, uh, dang, Chad, don't burn your corn. <laughs> we just had the conversation that we're not, we don't, color is good. We're not burning anything here. All right. So I'm not now burning over here. You said what? No, I was talking to KK. Uh oh. <laughs> now we're going to cut up our cucumbers. Do you have an American cucumber or an English cucumber? Uh, I got a cucumber. That's all I know. <laughs> I think you have an American, no, you have an English one. So the American cucumbers, the um, skin is a lot more waxy, and they're shorter, and they're shorter. They're not long. 
All right. So we are going to cut our cucumber. So first things first, how we're going to hold a knife. You want to put your thumb here, your hand wrapped around like this. We're going to rotate our knife like this when we cut. I don't have my big boys. I'll put my big boys up in the box. Oh, okay. You just have a, a little knife today? Yeah, I got a baby. All right. Well, we're going to cut our um, cucumber into half moon shapes. So how we're going to get there is, first I cut mine into a more manageable size, into like two inch pieces. And then we're going to cut it in half. So we end up with half moons. Oh, I said oh, we're going to do quarter moons. So we have half moons. Quarter moons. And then we're just going to cut that again in half. Like this. So we have four pieces. And then we're going to cut those four pieces into our little quarter moon pieces. So you're ending up with something that looks like this. Let me know if you need need me to do it again. Meanwhile, like girl pants is <laughs> So you're you're leaving Carolina soon, right? That's why your knives are packed. Uh, yeah, I plan on leaving about two weeks. Okay, and you're going to Alabama. Going back to the ham. Nice. What is the ham? What is, oh, for those who do not know what the ham is, can you please tell us? Oh, it's Birmingham. Birmingham, Alabama. Birmingham. And that's where you were born and raised? Yes, ma'am. Awesome. I've never been to Alabama. Am I missing anything? Is it like somewhere the, I need to go? You like the country? Do I like the country? I like the, I like nature. Like that country? Uh... Yeah, we got some nature. It's pretty, I mean, it's just country, you know. It's not really fast like New York is. It's kind of slower. I mean, I like, I do like nature. I'm from California originally, so I didn't grow up, I didn't grow up in the city. I mean, I don't know what you're thinking. I grew up on a barn or something. I didn't grow up on a barn. Well, I mean, with <laughs> horses and cows and stuff, but it's just slower. I see. But I imagine it's like really pretty. I don't know. Never been. Don't know. Uh, yeah, it's, it's an opinion. Some people don't like Birmingham, but I like it. You know? Ah, I see. Question? Being in New York the last couple of years, do you have any words of advice for James? Oh, so someone just asked me if I had any words of advice for you since I've been here for seven years and you're going to Alabama. Do you have any words of advice for me? You probably live in Jersey, I feel like, because the stadium's in Jersey. Um, so my advice to you is Mm -hmm. I, don't really, I don't really have any advice. Just have fun. Eat out a lot. There's some good restaurants. Um, and go, I don't know. I don't really have advice. I feel like his life is going to be so different than when I moved here when I was 25. <laughs> what was your life like when you moved there at 25? Oh, when I was 25, I was a little wild. I was out in the streets a lot, hanging out. I don't even hang out like I used to. Um... But I used to, yeah, I used to be out just meeting people, eat, exploring. I used to just like wander around different neighborhoods, which was really fun to me. Um, oh, I'm gonna be doing a wander. Yeah, I, I didn't. You don't strike me as a wander around the city, just taking a stroll in the East oh, no. Village. Stuff was get shot. <laughs> no. no, not in the East Village. All right, did you cut your whole cucumber? I'm over here chatting, and I didn't even finish mine. Oh yeah, I cut it off. Okay, good. You are ahead of me once again. We also want to start, um, we're going to start grilling off our wings or drumsticks. So since our grill pan is already nice and hot, we can start putting them in the grill pan now. I got a question for both of you guys. How hard is it not to eat your own food as you prepare? Um, so I'll answer first. It's very difficult to not eat food as I'm preparing it. I don't know if you guys just saw. I definitely snuck a couple cucumbers into my mouth as I was cutting these. James, how do you feel about eating your own food as you're preparing it? Is it hard for you to avoid it? Uh, give me one second. Hold on, give me one second. James is, you guys, James is real focused. He needs his meal to come out amazing. And I appreciate his focus. Uh, that's not really hard. I mean, I like to eat my meal when it's like full James's time. pan is smoking. Hey, that's a good thing. 
You like to eat your meal when it's fully done? Yeah, yeah. I can have my sides and everything done. Yeah, so you're not a snacker. You're like a let me make this whole meal and let me sit down and eat it. Yeah, that's me. I like I like to eat the finished product. Yeah. I'm way more of a snacker. Questions? Smoky pan is it was a Oh question. James's smoky pan is perfect. We want it to be hot. You just moved yeah. it. Trying oh. to call me up. <laughs> <laughs> over there running back and forth doing a juke move all right so we're gonna take a pause on our salad and move to grilling our chicken um before you start grilling your chicken james do you have a sheet pan that looks like I this let me get i'll get it out yeah because we're gonna once the chick so we're not gonna cook the chicken all the way through on the grill we're going to sear it on the grill so it gets nice color and then we're gonna finish it in our oven which is why we turned on the oven so, TT, what kind of wings do you have? Do you have um, party wings or do you have like regular wings that are the little L shape? Oh, no, um, I got drumsticks because yeah, everybody have, fuck all the wings. No, no, you have drumsticks. Someone just asked a question about oh. how long we're going to cook wings. But so if you're doing, if you're grilling the wings, we're going to grill them until they have nice color or drumsticks like James is making. And then we're going to finish them in the oven for about 20 to 30 minutes if you have wings. The drumsticks might take just a tad longer, but we'll see how that goes. But we're going to start grilling our chicken. This pan is now off the fire. It's fine. It was hot. His pan was really hot because it was smoky. Yeah, so I, now, I dropped the temperature down a little bit. Yeah. It's cool. You want it to be really hot when you start putting chicken on it. So we're going to put, we're going to grill our chicken until it looks like you want to eat it. And then we're going to finish it in the oven because it's definitely not going to cook all the way through on the grill. Yes, man. Say no, say no more. That's true. And then you just, when you take them off the um, the grill skillet, you just throw them on, on the pan? On the sheet tray, yep. Oh, I did, did. How long have you missed that? How long are we searing them? How long? Yes. It probably will take about a minute or two on each side, and you'll have to rotate your wings. So, the wings. Yeah, she has party wings. Oh, yeah, I have party wings too, TT. So, the wing is um, round, so you're going to have to rotate it just like we rotated our corn to get color on all the sides, if that makes sense. I'm going to go back to the grill. You said one to two minutes on each side, right? Yep. You want to make sure they have color. Is it different for him to cook the No. It won't be different for him um, for the searing portion, but the oven time will be different. Also, I want to go. I can't be having James and salmonella poison. It's not going to get salmonella. James, also, once you put your chicken on, if you want to grab some aluminum foil for your food tray, so you don't have to. Um... Oh, you yeah, already got that. Okay, oh. good. I was moving while you was talking. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to check my chicken. Hey, Chris, oh, keep yeah. over the time. Huh? Let me know when it get two minutes. Oh, okay. So that's like what we're looking for, our little grill marks. Hey, James. Grill marks of our chicken. Grill marks. You see it? Did he see oh, my gosh, the chicken smells so good. Did he see the grill mark? Oh, James, did you see the grill marks? Uh, how long did you have yours on there? Just some, like a minute or so. Ooh, I need to go back. I need to move it. Oh, babe, right, like that right there? Yep, perfect. Yep. Yeah. Um, James, Cody uh, said you know you're messing up already. Hey, what, what did Cody cook, matter of fact? Cody cooked um, chicken parmesan, stuffed chicken parmesan. Uh-oh. He said it came out good. He probably did lying. He, he said, probably boy, lying? He, he probably did lying. He ain't got no flat. Bro, they, they took all the chicken at the store. All they had left was thighs and, and um, drumsticks. Does your chicken smell good as it's cooking, James? Oh, yeah, mine smells delicious. Okay, good. That is the key. Uh, Cody, uh, James, you got about one more minute. All right, good. Hey, mom, about done now. Put them on at yeah, look We're at really that. just trying to get those grill marks. Yeah, you good. 
And then you want to put them right in the oven, James, once they're off the grill. Right in the oven. Yep, and you can turn off your grill. We're done using the grill now. Do we need to oil the baking sheet? No, you don't need to oil the baking sheet. The chicken is, has a good amount of grease that's going to come off. Oh, James is fancy with his wrap, too. Your, your chicken's going to get even more crispy. Yeah, because I found from just putting my, my chicken on a little, the uh, aluminum foil, it wasn't really cooking it thoroughly, like on both sides, so. Yes, very key to know. I, this, thank you, James, for this note. I don't have a rack like that, but if you like your chicken extra crispy, definitely get a rack, invest in a rack like how James does, because that helps the grease strip off, so the grease is not cooking in your chicken, and it helps the air circulate around your chicken more thoroughly, too. Yeah, Cody. Yeah, Cody. <laughs> He's putting his chicken in now. That's yeah. all six of them, James? Nah, I'm going to just say that them three, if I have to, I'm going to wait to see how these come out, and then I'm going to put the other three on. Oh, he wants to make sure the seasoning is exactly right before. Yeah, I'm not trying to waste no chicken. No, that's smart, though. That's very smart. Hey, James. Yo. What's the best team in New York? The Jets, the Giants, or the Bills? The Giants, of course. <laughs> who, who has that? Yeah, Cody plays for the Bills. He can't say any other team besides the Giants. Yeah. That's fine. We don't, I don't think we play the Bills next year. They don't play the Bills yeah. next year? Yeah, because I was going to come straight for Cody. <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys even on the field at the same time? Yes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I don't, I don't know what the rest of the ball. <laughs> yeah, Cody uh, position, they always try to, they try to hurt the cornerbacks. Nice. All right, I'm putting my chicken in. Yeah, how long do you want me to keep these in here? Because mine are already in there. Um, we're going to keep them in at least 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, we'll catch. All right, 15. How are you going to check them? Are you going to oven check them? We, uh, do you find your meat thermometer? I think that's in the box, too. Oh, okay. So we're going to use our good old finger check to feeling the chicken. And if we must, we can cut into one to make sure that it's done. All right, let's go. Oh, let's start our glaze for our chicken. So for the glaze, we need to put a half a cup of water, a half a cup of maple syrup, and that fresh thyme that I had. Used. All right, hold on, hold on. Let me get my, let me get situated. And I'm going to just call you. I do. I do. Okay, so this is, you can also add in like a teaspoon of the hot chili flakes to this glaze. Teaspoon of hot chili flakes. Oh, 
my maple syrup is done. And we're going to turn on You uh, you cut your time up, right? on the flame and it... No, I didn't cut it up. You know what I did? What you can do for time because we're not we're not actually going to be eating it. It's just really to add flavor to our sauce. But you can rub it in your fingers a little bit, and that'll help release some of the essence of the thyme. Rub it in the finger. Yeah. All right. And, and you can smell it. Like, once you rub it, it will smell a lot more potent. All right. So you already made yours? Yeah, it's on the stove. So oh. but I can bring it over. It is the half a cup of maple syrup, half a cup of water, and the thyme. Oh, I got and it. Our, and our hot chili flakes. And what did you put your, your stove on? You put it on high or low? Um, more like medium. Basically, medium. what we're going to do with this is reduce it down until it gets thick again. Uh -huh. Oh, I like this camera angle. You're really showing us what's happening. Yeah, I need to let people know. <laughs> Man, you said it. A little bit more. There you go. <laughs> You're getting a lot of love from people saying welcome to New York, James. I uh, appreciate all the love, all my my New York Giants fans mm -hmm. and family, friends and family. G-Man. Yeah, G-Man. <laughs> you know, I got to get used to the slang. I just got, I just got here. <laughs> all right, so... Now we, so we're going to put that on medium heat and we're going to let it reduce as we finish up the rest of our salad. All right. So, for our salad, we already have our cucumbers. Now we're going to cut the corn off of the cob. Have you ever done this before, James? I've never done this before. Okay. Something I'm, I'm about to watch you. <laughs> All right. So you're going to hold your corn just like this and it mm -hmm. is going to fly a little bit around but you can just run your knife down and the corn will fall off. Alternatively, if you don't, if you want to try to get it from flying anywhere, you can actually mm -hmm. do it in the bowl. And oh, yeah, you literally just run your knife down and most of it will get caught in the bowl. Yeah, about to do it now. You want to do that with both of your corns. Oh, there you go. And it will be a lot easier when you are back to more of your real life with your real knives. But you look like you're making that little knife work. Oh, uh, yeah, this one's sturdy. I've had this one for a minute now. Mm -hmm. It ain't broke, won't fix. That's what they say. <laughs> oh, we have a question. James, what is your favorite meal to cook for yourself? My favorite meal to cook for myself, I enjoy cooking steak for myself. Steak and um, potatoes, cauliflower, or some kind of green, like asparagus or broccoli. How do you like to cook your cauliflower? Uh, so I had a uh, like a ninja blender. I would mash it up and then put lemon in there, some garlic, um, and of course the lemon pepper uh, seasoning. Oh, that, that, is, that seems to be your thing. You are a lemon pepper guy. Yeah, I pretty much put lemon pepper on everything. <laughs> that's what, see, that's why he saved those other drumsticks. He's going to put lemon pepper on when this is over. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. So what else is going to go in the salad? What else is going in the salad? We have some tomatoes and some jalapenos. So I'm going to rinse off my tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes? Yeah. This is almost like a, a salsa. Almost. Okay. What are we, doing the we just put it in at 37, so it hasn't even been 10 minutes. Oh, okay. So, James, once you are done with your corn, you're going to go ahead and grab your tomatoes and just cut them in half. And put okay. Them in. Hey, is it um, something specific about tomatoes that make them big? Um, I think it's just, 
Actually, you know, that's a good question that I don't know the answer to. And I was about to make one up, but I really just don't know the answer. <laughs> Yeah, because I was looking for, like, actual baby tomatoes, but I just figured you was talking about small ones. Oh, yes. Oh, that's what you're asking. So there is a difference between cherry tomatoes and grape tomatoes. These are – can I see this? Let me see your tomato. I'm about to open this container real quick for my tomato. Also – The cherry rubs. Oh, yeah, cherry rubs, yep. So those are, I think those are um, grape tomatoes, and mine is a grape tomato. Cherry tomatoes are just, they're more circular, but grape tomatoes are a little more tapered. Uh, also, James, check on your sauce to make sure it's not over-reducing on the oven, or on the stove, because it, it just seems really steamy. Oh, uh, we turn it down? Yeah, just a little. Uh, yeah, it's bubbling over there. <laughs> It's good that we want it to reduce, but you don't want it to over-reduce, which is means it, like, will just get too thick and there'll be nothing left of it. I got you. Oh. So I can show you a cool trick, because cutting tomatoes like this is a little annoying. A little annoying. Tomatoes. Over and over. If you have two lids to any type of plastic container, and a sharp knife. I'm always scared to show tricks because then if they don't work, I'm going to be like, oh no. But you put your tomatoes in the middle, put a few of them, then put your head on top, mm -hmm. and then run your knife through, and you end up with cut tomatoes. So instead of cutting one at a time, I just cut like six. Mm. All right. But you can also just cut them one at a time. Nah, that's just a good like... little trick. <laughs> I'm going to try that one out. Might as well try it out. Might as well. Man, I'm going to make shit. And you'll probably only need about half of this container, James. About half of it? All right, cool. Yep, half of our container. Yeah, I poured all the bad boys out. Question? Uh, can you, uh, someone ask the difference between your stove and James' stove, and which one is better? So James looks like he has an electric stove. I have a gas stove. Um, I'm assuming that James' stove is a little more powerful than mine is, just because the, I have a gas stove, which I typically prefer, but this brand of gas stove is miniature, and the flame is not that hot, so it's not my favorite stove to cook on. Um, but James... Stove is electric and it looks powerful. But you don't like cooking on electric stoves? I'm not a huge fan of cooking on electric. How do you feel about electric stoves, James? Well, I was trying to figure out what was the problem. I was always burning stuff sometimes, and you just told me why. The electric stove yeah. is powerful. It's so powerful, and you can't really control the heat in a nuanced way. Yeah. Like when you're using gas, you can be like, oh, like a medium ish high. When you're using electric, it's like eight or nine or five, and it's very hard. It takes a while to get to you know, get to know how to use it. Yeah, when I was trying to uh, make sauces and stuff, I would always end up, I guess, over-reducing it. Mm-hmm. Because I didn't realize the electric stove is, is more powerful than a gas one, so. For sure. And, like, there's no control. It's just, like, hot or not. Cody said that's because you can't cook. Not to just, not just don't blame the stove. <laughs> Cody's out here coming for you, uh, James. Man, Cody a hater, man. <laughs> Don't worry, I got some for uh, Olami. <laughs> how did how did Cody food come out? Cody said his food came out good. It looked good. I didn't get to taste it because he's in Oklahoma. Yep, that looks good, James. Perfect. Yo, Cody. All right, so you get um. Let's do the jalapeno next. Jalapeno, jalapeno. I don't really like spiciness that much. I'm gonna walk. Off really quick. So I'm going to use only about half of my jalapeno. Um, be aware, whenever you're cutting anything with chilies, it has this property called capsaicin. And if it gets in your eyes or your face, it can burn you a lot. So just be aware of this. Like really wash your hands very thoroughly when we're done cooking before you touch anything else because it's very dangerous. Um, so we're going to cut our jalapeno in half. And then the seeds of the jalapeno are 
are actually like a thousand times hotter than the flesh of the jalapeno. So I'm gonna scoop those out and I can smell my jalapeno, it smells so strong. So I'm actually only gonna use like a fourth.